r slash atheism. Asabuster711 says. Former believers, what was your first critical thought that led to your deconstruction? When I was 16, I was chatting with my pals after our men's bible study, which is basically just a bunch of dudes talking about how bad porn is, and that we need to seek forgiveness for being horny. I stated that it's super weird that an all-loving god would just flood all of the earth because he didn't like what he created. None of my friends had any sort of convincing response. The next day I started seriously considering that my religion might be completely invalid. Dudazen says. My family says that God loves everybody, but a bunch of other people say that God hates everybody. Rather than just automatically assume my parents are 100% correct, I should read the book myself and find out. Several hundred genocides later, holy shit. Asabuster711 says. Pretty hard to look past the genocides, I didn't even clock them as genocides while I was growing up. The more that time goes on Christianity looks like a pretty cherry on top of an evil Sunday that does nothing but destroy. Asabuster711 says. Pat self on back for evil Sunday wordplay. Dudley Didrang says. I was a devout Christian into my 50s. I had many critical thoughts over the decades. The problem of divine hiddenness was a problem for me over much of my adult life. I was sure there was an answer. I did a lot of bible study trying to resolve the problem of hiddenness. Ironically, the more I studied the bible, the more apparent the problem of hiddenness became. My final break came from studying the letters of Paul. Paul's letters forced me to admit that Acts is mostly a book of mythology, not history. That led directly to the conclusion that the Gospels were mostly books of mythology. Primenum Berser Emigem says. Being gay. I knew I was into dudes when I was a child, before I knew what gay was. So this deity created me in his image, but also has told me that I'm wrong for having these urges and his followers are telling me that I'm wrong and will go to some spooky place for being attracted to guys as a guy. None of this makes any sense. It all contradicts itself and nobody can provide any sort of actual guidance. And that's before you factor in the hole in his image, which would imply God is already, frick, ed up. What the actual frick? Spiritual Medicine 7 says. One of my first major ones was when I was a teenager and realizing how many different kinds of religions there are in the world. And that most of them believed they were the correct one however, they couldn't all be correct. So what happened to the ones that weren't right? Katz and Scott says. I went to Catholic school and in first grade they taught us the creation story. I thought about it for a bit, and then asked my grandma who made God. She said that no one had, and God was always just there. It was a very dissatisfying answer, and I thought about it a lot. Over the years I had more questions, that no one had good answers to, but that was the first one. Asabuster711 says. That's why they start indoctrinating kids young. Gotta brainwash em fast, before they ask any more questions. Sounds like you were the smartest first grader in the class. Sweet Sweet Olive says. My very religious mother always hid evolution from me while growing up. When I was in my early 20s, I had a garden, and was growing onions, and noticed there were weeds that looked almost identical, but were growing right alongside them started thinking about evolution, and went deep down the rabbit hole. Evolution is real religion is total bullshit. That's what I concluded. R slash atheism. P00 key monster says. Family fallout and grief. We had a family gathering recently, it was announced that Trump was shot, and the whole thing devolved into a huge mess with my husband and I being on the opposite side of his family's beliefs. We're in Oklahoma so we're the outliers here as atheists and we aren't republicans. The fallout has been mostly coldness and facebook posts, but I feel like him grieving a death in the family. I wrote something, but him too afraid to send it. 
I'm not looking for validation, maybe just understanding? As a mother I refuse to show loyalty to a man who preys on children as a childhood sexual assault survivor, I refuse to show loyalty to a child rapist or his followers who blame his victims. As a victim of unspeakable religious abuse, I refuse to show anything but contempt for someone who has let the Heritage Foundation propose an evangelical dictatorship as their platform. As a woman I refuse to show anything but disgust for a candidate that has set in motion the stripping away of women's rights, access to abortion, birth control and necessary medical care. If you have had an abortion and want to deny that right for anyone else, keep your rules for thee and not for me rhetoric out of here. As someone who has had every shred of freedom and humanity taken away from them by zealots, I refuse to let anyone put me in that position again. As someone who has a neurodivergent child, I cannot stand by someone who views anyone with a disability with sheer loathing and disgust. As someone with school-aged children I absolutely refuse to support anyone who wants the Bible taught in the classroom. I won't have my kids exposed to any religious materials until they become old enough to decide for themselves what spiritual beliefs they choose to have. As is my right as a parent. As someone who has experienced violence, I will not support a party that calls for violence and bloodshed. I don't want anyone to die. Had the bullet not missed they would have propped up an even more egregious candidate with the same platform written by the same people. I want one particular candidate to go to prison, and for democracy to continue, evangelical Christianity to release. It's stranglehold on politics, and for the rights of myself and everyone else to be secure. Frick off if you can't open your eyes. Read the material straight from the sources, listen to the hearings, pay attention to what is happening around you and above all, read a, frick, ein Bible, actually read it. Word for word. Study it. You might be disgusted by my views, you might be shocked by how I word myself. I was made this way by the evangelical right wing rhetoric that is threatening to take away everything that you take for granted and I've already had taken from me once before. I don't wear rose colored glasses because if you do, red flags just look like flags. I went to an evangelical TTI boarding school, I feel like him being sent back every time project 2025 comes up. They don't know what they're voting for, they don't know what they're supporting. I can't go back to that, I can't. They don't understand why I'm terrified. I'm grieving what freedom and security I gained, after I got out, only for what I experienced to become a... Jfjinko says. Well said. I'm from OK2. My wife and I agree with everything you said. Our views have affected our relationship with our OK relatives. I think we are on the right side of history. Today's dismissal of his classified documents cases further proof how he has affected the rule of law. Slightly Madangus says. I predict that at the RNC, Trump will say that God saved him so that he can save the country. Trump will say that God saved him because he is strong, stronger than any other man alive. He will say that Biden is too weak to save the country and that only he can do it. He will make it clear, without stating it, that he has been anointed by God to be the American savior. This is the moment that Trump is transformed into the prophet king saved by God, copyright pending. Redreaded 1965 says. I hear you. I spent too much of my life, 45 years, being controlled by the Pentecostal slash evangelical churches. This Project 2025 thing is triggering those memories, and I want to scream at the media for not bringing this shit to America's attention. I hate the asinine posts covering social media about Trump being protected slash chosen slash beloved slash etc. I literally want to climb on my rooftop and scream at the top of my lungs. How the Christians that I spent so much time around can worship a rapist, lying con man I will never understand. Even raising my kids in church I didn't want schools teaching my kids religion and faith. That has always been the parents job. And should continue to be. I would actually like laws prohibiting proselytization in public. 
you want to invite people to your church, have at it, but spewing hate and violence should be against the law. Imnogesus says. I suggest reading Bob Baltimore's book on right-wing authoritarianism. It goes into the psychological reasons why followers of authoritarian leaders exist, and why it's nearly impossible to change their minds with facts. It may help you understand how your family members think and feel, and why your letter unfortunately isn't likely to affect their views. Lover Bean Get at 54321 says. Don't send it, just cut the ashats out of your life until Trump is no longer a threat to democracy. Jim Dixon says. I went to an evangelical TTI boarding school. If you want to educate people, that's what you should talk about. You're an authority, because your experience was unique. Unless you had other relatives who went there too, nobody has the standing to contradict you. Jim Dixon says. I get it, you have strong opinions, because of what you went through. However, if you want to have a good relationship with your relatives, I recommend you leave all those things unsaid. At the very least, give yourself time to cool down before you. On the other hand, if you're fed up with them, and ready to cut all ties, and burn your bridges behind you, then go ahead, and send that message to all of them. It will accelerate the process. If you want to consider other options, just ask. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.